In today's tutorial, we'll build a scene with a grid of overlapping rotating rings. We'll be using version 0.30 of the toolkit, so make sure you're using at least that version. Check the video description for a download link. Start by dropping the toolkit talks into your project. I like to do it up at the root, outside of that project one, but you can put it wherever you want. We'll start by setting up the renderer. Open the palette using the Alt-R shortcut and create a Raymarch Render 3D. I'm going to set the resolution so it fits in the side panel, but you don't need to do that. Add a null top to connect it to the first output so you can see the result. With the renderer selected, use the Alt-Shift-R shortcut to open RayTK's Editor Tools menu. And under Add Camera, we're going to choose Look at Camera. Then on the camera, we're going to set the FOV angle to 80, and then increase the Z position to 6. Then select the renderer again, and open the Editor Tools with Alt-Shift-R. And under Add Light, we're going to choose Point Light. And on the light, we're going to set the position to negative 5, 8, and 5. Next, we'll set up overlapping rings of spheres. Open the palette again with Alt-R and create a sphere SDF and connect that to the first input on the renderer. On the sphere, decrease the radius to 0.2. This is the base shape that we'll be arranging into rings. Create a modular polar and insert that between the sphere SDF and the renderer. This is reflecting space around the z-axis, but since the sphere is symmetrical, we don't see any changes yet. So on the modular polar, increase the first part of this offset parameter up to 1. That will spread out the slices of space away from the center. Then we're going to decrease the repetitions to 4. Try adjusting the rotate parameter. This is what we're going to be using to provide the motion. Next, we'll make a few more rings and arrange them. So copy the modulo polar, and you're going to paste that three more times so that you have four of them total. Then select all four of those, and open the Editor Tools with Alt-Shift-R, and then under Arrange SDFs, you're going to choose Simple Union and then connect that new range operator to the renderer. This gives us four rings of balls, but they're currently on top of each other, so we don't see anything yet. On the arrange, scroll down and switch on Enable Translate. This allows us to individually position each of the inputs. In the Translate 1 parameter, increase the Y part of the translate up to one. So this puts the bottom part of that ring in the center. Then for translate 2, increase the x part to 1, and that puts the left side of that ring in the center. Then for translate 3, we're going to decrease the y to negative 1, putting the top in the center. And then finally for translate 4, we're going to decrease the x to negative 1, so that the right side of that is now in the center. Now, if you would try adjusting the rotate parameter on any of these modular polars, you're going to see how it moves, and then when it's at even divisions of 90 degrees, it's going to line up with the other ones. Later on, we'll animate these parameters. For now, on one of them, increase the rotate just a little bit so it doesn't quite line up. 
maybe around like 20 degrees. Then on the arrange, change the combine mode from simple union to smooth union. This blends the shapes, but as you can see here, where multiple balls are overlapping, the blending is causing them to expand a bunch. So on the arrange, we're going to decrease that blend radius down to around 0.1. So that gives us a little bit of blending between them, but it doesn't cause the ones that are overlapped to increase by too much. Next, we'll add some connecting rings between the balls. Open the palette and create a torus SDF. And then select the arrange and then also select the torus and open the editor tools with Alt Shift R. And then under combine SDFs, just choose simple union. And then connect that new combine operator to the renderer. On the torus, change the axis to Z so that it's facing the camera. And then on the thickness, we're going to drop that down to around 0.03. Then we want to have the size of that ring match the spacing of one of these rings of balls. So we're going to increase the radius up to 1. Next, we want four copies of the ring. One option would be to use another modulo polar, but that wouldn't allow us to overlap the rings. So instead, create a radial clone and insert that between the torus SDF and our combine operator. Then to position them in the same way that we've positioned the balls, increase the radius offset to one. Then on the combine, we're going to change the combine mode from simple union down to column union and then drop that blend radius down to around 0.1. So that gives us a little bit of a shape around those places where the rings are intersecting with the balls. And then I'm just going to move this rotation back down so that they line up again. Next, we'll add a material. Create a modular map. And we're going to insert that between the combine and the renderer. With the modular mat selected, open the editor tools with Alt Shift R. And then under Add Diffuse, choose Orin Nyar. On the Diffuse contrib, increase both the roughness and albedo to 1. This gives us some standard light-based shading. To add some color variation, create an iridescence contrib and connect that to the next available input on the material. This adds a rainbow pattern around the edges based on which direction they're facing. Now it's time to animate the rotation parameters. What we want is to rotate each ring in steps of 90 degrees in sequence. So the top ring goes first, then the one on the right, then the bottom, and then the left, and then the top again, and so on. We'll drive that using an LFO that pulses periodically. Create an LFO chop and change the type to pulse, and then drop the frequency down to 0.5. Every time this pulses, we want to increase the rotation for the next ring in the sequence. Add a count chop connected to the LFO. Every time the LFO pulses, this is gonna increase by one. Next, we need to separate out the steps into four channels that increase sequentially. To do that, create a fan chop connected to the output of the count. 
And then on the channel names parameter, we're going to change that to R and then open square bracket one dash four and then close square bracket. So that'll give us four channels here, R1 through R4. Then on the outside range, we're going to change that to loop index. So now, depending on the input count that's coming in, only one of these channels is going to be on at a time. Next, we need to use those channels to increase a separate count per channel. So create another count shop and connect that to the output. So now, as it steps through, each of these is going to increase sequentially, and then when it hits the last one, it'll add more to the first one, and so on. Now we need to scale those to angle ranges. So add a math chop, and on the multiply add page, we're going to increase that multiply to 90. Then add a null chop on the end. Now we want to use these channels to control the rotation on our modular polars. So go to the modular polar 1 and then drag that first channel to R1 onto the rotate parameter and choose chop reference. And then do the same thing for the other three. It's going to look like it isn't doing anything, and that's because rotating one of these rings by 0 or 90 degrees is going to look effectively the same. So we need to smooth out those transitions so it doesn't suddenly jump from 0 to 90 or 90 to 180 and so on. To do that, there are two options for this, either the filter chop or the lag chop. We're going to use lag since it gives us some more options for a bouncing motion. Create a lag chop and then insert it between the math and the null. So now when those counts increase, it's going to smooth out that transition. So now we're going to start seeing that motion. To slow it down a little bit on the lag parameter, we're going to increase both parts of this to around 0 0.5. Then to give it a little bit of a bounce, we're going to increase both parts of the overshoot here to around 0 0.3. So now you can see when it hits the end, it goes a little bit past it and then bounces back. And that's our scene. To recap, we're using a Sphere SDF and we're repeating it radially. We have four different copies of that laid out and combined using an arrange, and on the arrange we're using the translate parameters to position each of those rings so that they overlap in the center. Then we've got a torus ring, which we are cloning radially four times, and we're using a cl radial clone instead of a modular puller so that those rings can overlap. Then we're combining that with the balls using a combine with a column union to give it that blend area there. Then we're adding material using a modular material with both a diffuse shading element and an iridescence element to give it some color. Then we've got a renderer with a camera and a standard point light. Then to control the animation, we have an LFO that's pulsing periodically. Those pulses are being counted up. The fan chop is spreading those numbers across four different channels that flip on in sequence. Then we're counting the increases of, of those to get four different counts, scaling that up to angles, and then using a lag to smooth out the transitions. And then we're using those resulting channels to drive the rotate parameter on our four different modular polars. That's all for today. Check out my Patreon for early access to tutorials, exclusive scene downloads, and more. Thanks for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe.